Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. I was listening to a podcast recently and it was really interesting because it was about decision making and they touched on two different types of decision making on fear-based decision making or logical decision making and I think it's something I've spoken about or I've written about in the past and I would like to add inspired decision making into this category as well because I think that there there is a third category that isn't always talked about and what I'd also like to add is that fear-based there's another component to that and that's overexcited in fact, I think I would call that category of decision making over emotional because it's either overly fearful or overly excited, but they're both based on a reactive decision making process. Now, I just want to go into it a little bit more detail. So over emotional decision making, it comes from when the subconscious is sensing something in your environment is subconsciously triggering you. And when it comes from fear, and I've said this so many times, and I've seen it so many times, any decision made in fear will actually create the very thing that you fear. So if you find that you're scared and fearful, and you're having to make a decision, give yourself some time to find a neutral space to make that decision from. Again, also, if you're overexcited, you might make a decision feeling invincible, and that you can conquer the world and you have a very distorted picture of the world at that stage as you do when you're in deep fear as well because in deep fear it's the opposite of being instead of feeling like you can conquer the world you feel like the world is conquering you but in both of those scenarios if you make a decision in those spaces it can have major impact in your life in a negative way because if you're overly excited and overconfident the decisions you can make might challenge your belief of yourself, your subconscious belief of yourself to such a degree that it puts you into fear. And that's the other thing about decisions in this space. They can mean that you oscillate um, up and down and up and down from over to under to overly emotional and excited to overly emotional and fear based. And you can end up bouncing between those two on and on and on. And it's a very exhausting and overwhelming situation to find yourself in. So what I'm saying here is that what you want to be doing is you want to be accessing either the logical decision making or the inspired decision making. But how you get to those particular things is by first acknowledging the state that you're in. So this is all about changing your state, changing your state so that the decisions that you make actually take your life in the direction that you want to go rather than being in reaction to things and finding yourself bouncing all over the place like a ping pong ball. So the first step, as I've mentioned, is to acknowledge, to know what sort of state you're in. The second step is to try and neutralize your state. So if you're overexcited and overstimulated, then what things do you need to do to bring yourself down to a much calmer space? I'm thinking about it now and this is just my personal things and you will have to think about what works for you. For me, exercise of some sort would work, making sure that I'm eating and drinking all the right things because if I have too much, I'm not, I don't have a lot of caffeine. So if I have too many cups of tea, <laughs> that can make me feel very wound up and overexcited um, just from the caffeine in it. So heaven only knows if I drank a few cups of coffee, what I'd be like. But for you, it might be coffee, um, you might smoke, you might drink, whatever it is. If you do too much of that, you might find that phys physiologically, your body gets agitated and isn't in a neutral calm space. Um, what I've also noticed, and I don't drink very much at all, but if I do drink, I've noticed that the day after I've had a few drinks, um, I feel heavy, lethargic, slightly less enthusiastic about life. And it's only something I've noticed since I've stopped sort of drinking as much as I did in my youth, because I have long periods where I don't drink. And I know what state I'm in when I haven't been drinking. So when I do have a couple of glasses of wine, I'm much more aware of how I feel the next day. If you tend to drink a lot, you might not even be aware of this particular state of your being. But I'm just sharing it with you 
as a bit of information in case you want to know. I would imagine smoking cigarettes, taking drugs or anything like that can also alter your state. So be very aware of what you're eating and drinking. Again, if you eat lots and lots of sugar and rubbishy foods, you might also react to that. So just be aware of that. So for me, as I've said, it's about exercise, getting out in nature, maybe listening to soothing, calming music, whatever that is for you. Breathing, breathing very deeply. There's a breathing technique called 7 which is seven breaths in and 11 breaths out. I think there's, there's many different breathing techniques and you can have a look at them and see which one suits you best. I know that on Insight Timer, which is an app, I'll put a link to the app in the show notes below, there are numerous meditations, but there's also different breathing things that you can do, different breathing exercises that you can also find on there that can take you through different things that you might find interesting. I know there's something called fire breathing, which is also different, but that's more of an energizing, getting energy to move around your body, so that might not be suitable. But play around and see. Meditating can be another way to get yourself to neutralize and calm down and switch off excessive thoughts or of, of excitement, exciting thoughts or excessive fear-based thoughts. Even just having a sleep and waking up the next day to see how you feel might help change and shift your, your, how you're feeling and how you're being. So those are a number of suggestions for things that you can do to try and change and alter your state and bring it into a more neutral space. And when you're in that neutral space, then it's up to you to decide if you want to use logical decision making. And logical decision making is about weighing up all the facts, weighing up things that you know in the past and getting lots of information and looking at that information and making a decision based on that information. That's logical decision making. Now, Personally, I found that logic doesn't always, life isn't always logical. Life, life can go in many different directions that can seem completely illogical. Um, my personal point of view is to allow the flow of life, to follow the flow of life. And I try to sit in the space of inspired decision making. And for me, what I need to do to connect to that is all of the things that I've said before, so making sure I'm eating and drinking healthily, I make sure I'm getting enough sleep, make sure I'm exercising. But for me, it's about throwing the problem up to the universe and asking and waiting for an answer to come to me. And that answer may come to me in a dream, it might come to me through something I'm reading, it might come to me from a conversation I've had with somebody, it might come to me if I go for a walk or a run out in nature and the idea might just pop into my head, but it's about being in the space of waiting for the answer to come. Expecting it, but not, or actually I love something I read recently, it's about hoping but not expecting. An expectation holds an attachment to something that you have a fixed idea of how it's going, the outcome's going to be. When you're sitting in an open space, waiting for that answer, being a receptacle for the answer to land in, there's no idea of frustration, there's no expectation, there's no interference in receiving that answer. It's just that you are there, getting on with your life, being aware of the question, being open to the answer coming to you, but also being open to the fact that you don't know where that answer is coming from. But it does generally, I mean, I've never not found an answer when I've used this methodology. And I found that the answers sometimes are not logical at all. But when I follow those answers, they lead me to an amazing destination that's normally better than what I'd hoped for. But that also takes trust. And I have spoken about trust, I think fairly recently. And if I can find it, I'll stick the link to that particular episode in the show notes below as well. So there's trust and faith and a deep belief in yourself. So those are the different things for me, of what I think about decision making. I hope that they give you some food for thought. I hope they help you along on your journey as you go through life. I've mentioned a number of things that are in the show notes below. You can also find links to my website where you can contact me for coaching if you're interested, um, for my online courses. And I'm also going to be starting a Ho'oponopono work sh uh, clearing session once a month. So if you're interested in that, um, sign up. The link to that will also be below. Um, I will do recordings of it. So if you can't make the time and the date, as long as you've signed up, you will be sent a recording and you can listen to it whenever you fancy and clear on the topic. So the first topic I'm doing is self-belief, but there will be other topics that I'll be doing as well as we go through them. Hope you have a fabulous week. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.